When it comes to used equipment, the prices aren't down and they could continue to fall. With the announcement that Saudi Arabia and Russia will extend their cuts into crude oil production through the end of the year, it looks like we could be headed for high diesel prices and volatile pricing in the near future. And proposed legislation to ban driverless trucks in California has been vetoed. Is this real life? We'll get into all that and more, including Jason Miller's take on the economy in general and the UAW strike. For Randall Riley, I'm Joshua Miller, and this is the 30 Day Reset. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Thanks for joining us. It's October, and you know what that means. It's finally beginning to cool off just a bit, and Halloween is right around the corner. So, happy October. We hope you all have a great month and a productive Halloween season. Now, every month here on the show, we bring you all of the latest driver recruiting data, some news stories, and check in with our friend up at Michigan State University, Jason Miller, for his take on the state of the economy. And as always, if you'd like a copy of everything we go over today, you can get that and more with this month's download featured down below. It covers all the topics from today's show and goes into even more detail than we have time to do here on the show. So don't forget to download your copy today. And while you're down there clicking around, go ahead and click the like, share, and subscribe buttons. You know the drill. Now, on with the show. First up, Trucking by the Numbers, brought to you by Stratus Strategize. We typically expect lead and higher costs to bottom out to their lowest cost around August before starting to climb again in September, and so far that trend is holding true. We also saw an all-time high for search activity in August. Yellow shutdown in July very likely contributed to the spike. August lead costs were also at their lowest level since April of 2020. Company driver CPH hit the lowest point since August of 2020, and owner op CPH fell by 20% month over month, resulting in the second lowest level on record. September saw a dip in search traffic, though, and it looks like the competition for drivers has increased, contributing to an increase in lead costs. On the freight side of things, while things seem to have reached some sort of equilibrium, the data indicates that it will likely take until Q2 of 2024, if not later, for the freight to fully rebound. Our friend Jason Miller is going to touch on that in just a bit. Overall volume took a dip after a post-Labor Day rebound, coming in nearly 30% below the five-year average. Spot rates were down 10% year-over-year, which is the least negative year-over-year -year comparison since August of 2022. And rates were down 4% when compared to the five-year average. Numbers were down across the board for all three major segments, drive-in, refrigerated, and flatbed, for both load volume and spot rate. For a detailed and full breakdown of load volume and rates by segment, and for those year-over-year -year and five-year average comparisons, you can go ahead and check out this month's download, and again, that's available for you down below. Now, for this month's headlines. First up, it looks like the falling prices for used equipment could continue their downward trend. For the Class 8 market, four-year-old OTR and vocational construction truck pricing is up 40% since 2018. Doesn't sound so bad. But the numbers take a turn when you shorten the timeline and just compare the prices to just last year, which results in a drop of 43% since last fall. While speaking on a Used Truck Association webinar, Josh Giles, the principal automotive analyst with Black Book, said, The overall values are down, but unfortunately, we still see some room to fall. Both Saudi Arabia and Russia have announced their intentions to extend their cuts in the production of heavy crude oil through the rest of the year. And when you know it, it happens to coincide with an increase in seasonal demand right here in the States. Heavy crude oil is the key to diesel fuel production. Diesel prices hit an all-time high, crossing the $5 per gallon average nationwide in March of 2022. And the price of diesel has increased 10 of the last 11 weeks, shooting up 86 cents since the week ending July 10th. Increased diesel prices could not only result in higher operating costs, but if the prices stay high enough for an extended period, it could end up recalibrating capacity by forcing inefficient or deadhead heavy operators out of the market. It's a tongue twister. And finally, Assembly Bill 316, a proposed law that would have effectively banned driverless trucks within the state of California, was struck down with a governor's veto. Referring to the possibility of the bill being signed into law, CEO of the Consumer Technology Association, Gary Shapiro, said in part, California's logistic industry, already struggling amid spiraling shipping costs, would see further loss of freight volume to Gulf and East Coast ports. The veto noted that AB 316 was unnecessary for regulation and oversight of heavy-duty autonomous vehicle tech in California, as existing law provides an appropriate regulatory framework. 
And that's it for this month's news stories. Now let's take a moment and check in with Michigan State University supply chain professor, Jason Miller. Welcome to this month's update. What I wanted to do is begin by really just putting the current freight recession that we're experiencing right now in perspective, because there's been a lot of hyperbolic conversation. And so in this first chart, what I've done is plotted the depth of each freight recession going all the way back to 1972, so over a 50-year period, and basically plotting how much have we seen ton miles decline from the peak of the prior cycle. The 2022-2023 recession that we're currently in right now from a freight standpoint is in red. Right now, ton miles as of July are down about 4% from the peak that was reached in March of 2022. That is substantially deeper than the 2019 freight recession. It's substantially deeper than the 2015-2016 freight recession. But for historical perspective, this is akin to 2000-2002. And what I really want to highlight, it is substantially less than the big three freight recessions that we experienced in 1981 through 1983, where we saw about a 13% decline in output. Um, the 1974-1975 oil shock recession, where there was a 16% decline in ton miles at the bottom. And then the global financial crisis, where we saw a 20% decline. So again, just putting things in perspective, while it is rough today, it was the 2008-2009 freight recession was literally five times more pronounced than what we're experiencing today. But that then brings the question, where are we at from a pricing standpoint? And the way I like to think of pricing is probably the most up-to-date sense of where the market's moving is to look at dry van spot rates if we're thinking over the road truckload. Um, and so as we start looking, we say, okay, where's spot at? Where's then broker buy rates at, both from DAT? Right now in September, we've seen a slight jump up, just a few cents from where we were in July. So we've likely hit bottom. You know, some of that jump is almost assuredly due to the higher prices of diesel that we're experiencing today versus two months ago. But when we really look at the dynamics and cadence of the market, the easiest thing to do is look at those broker buy contract rates relative to spot rates. And essentially what you see is anytime contract rates are about 10% or more above the average of the two, it tends to be a bear market. Anytime that number is below 10%, we tend to be in a bull market. What you can see looking today is as of September, we're still at solidly in bear market territory with a 20% premium on those broker buy contract rates. We're not seeing any evidence yet of coming out of this current pricing cycle. So right now, I'm just expecting this to sort of skid along where we're at with, of course, increases based on where diesel's going. And lastly, if we're talking about one of the biggest stories right now in the supply chain space that affects trucking, it's, of course, the ongoing UAW strike. And right now, as we're filming, we have strikes at three final assembly plants in the light truck sector, as well as 38 distribution facilities for spare parts for Stellantis and General Motors. So this table is showing essentially data from the Bureau of Economic Analysis that estimates for each dollar of lost output in white vehicle assembly, how does that cascade through the supply chain? And I've highlighted two specific pieces here. So not surprisingly, there's a lot of effect on motor vehicle parts. We're already seeing layoffs taking place at tier one and tier two automakers. But you'll see that for each $1 of motor vehicle demand lost, we lose five cents of steel production. That's going to be suggesting fewer flatbed loads over the coming weeks, especially if we see an expansion of the strike. And then lastly, you'll see a series in red. That's the trucking sector. So for each dollar of lost revenue for producing light trucks and SUVs, that cascades over to about two cents less trucking revenue. And that's just in the form of less transportation that is needed. So as we're sort of Thinking about where things are at right now, currently still in our freight recession. July was a very rough month. August likely will have looked a little better, but September is likely to look worse again because of the auto strike. We're not seeing any signs yet of the pricing dynamic changing. 
So again, as we're starting to think, when are we likely to exit the cycle? I really hate to say it, but Q2 2024 is sort of the first possibility. And then I'm starting to be increasingly less optimistic that that will happen. So unfortunately, some sobering thoughts as we focus on things this month. Thank you very much, Jason. Your analysis and expertise are, as always, greatly appreciated. Not the best news in the world, but hey, what can you do? And with that, we've come to the end of yet another edition of the 30-Day Reset. Don't forget, you can get your copy of all the data and a much more in-depth breakdown of things in this month's download down below. If you want to dig into some of the recruiting data we covered for yourself, there's also a link for Stratus Strategize down there. Until next time, everyone have a great month and a happy Halloween. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the content. If you do and you like to watch some more, you can always check out down right there. That's a video chosen specifically for you. Or you can check out this playlist over here with my buddy Seth. See you next time. Okay, bye.